Welcome back. So I am back from having two weeks off, and I guess those people who messaged me, which was quite a few of you, um, and said, what's going on with the videos? Um, I guess you didn't hear where I mentioned in my last video that I was taking a couple of weeks off. Uh, actually, back in Australia, um, visiting the family and, uh, you know, dealing with all the smoke from the bushfires and everything like that. But uh, anyway, so I'm back now, and uh, the aircraft is just as I left it, so that's good. So the next job now is to uh, get these aileron sleeved cables installed there. So I was prepping for that last time and uh, everything that I needed arrived. And the actual the internal cable that I'd ordered from the same company I got the sleeves from, turns out that was actually uh, the wrong type of cable. It was too stiff, so I had to order that from Spruce. I'll show you that in a minute. But I got these uh, cable adjusters there just you know threaded into those brackets that I showed you last time. So the job now is to mount those uh, inside of the keel. And here's the cable I bought. So I got this whole roll, because Spruce had run out of it. Um, I got this whole roll for, um, what was it, $31 for 250 feet. And Spruce was selling the same stuff for $1.35 a foot. So it's about a tenth of the price of what I paid. So that was a good deal. Uh, so now um, the sleeve, I've already got conduits in the wing there that run back to the inside, the um, back um, compartment there behind the cabin so there's the, the sleeve uh, cable sleeve so I've got a whole bunch of that and I'm just running it up through in the conduit there into that back compartment there where the gear is and then from there I can thread it up uh, the center of the keel up to the uh, the front part of the keel where it needs to live so not that difficult just it's strong enough that I can just thread it didn't have to snake it or anything like that and the conduit that I had there for the rudder cables had plenty of room in there as you'll see here um, to take another sleeve cable so that you can see there's the, the rudder one already and then the new one going in there as well and there it, there it is pulled up the front now and I've just sort of got it mocked into place with that bracket and just holding that bracket in place there with a craft stick or a mixing stick just to get it sort of um, measured out before I drill the holes into the side of the keel for that so I've got it uh, taped in place and also still held there um, so I could drill the holes and got it all nicely aligned and the cables not sort of uh, being put under too much stress there with that sort of six inch radius um, on the curve there it's nothing too much and then I discovered this when I was walking around so this is a bit of a problem um, for some reason the fuselage has gone and put pressure on this window and I don't know why because when it was installed there was no pressure on it and it's gone and split the window um, so I won't be able to pressurize the aircraft now Anyway, it's a bit of a bummer, um, but you know, again, prototype, I'll have to change that window out if I want to pressurize it, but other than that, it shouldn't really be a problem. Um, it's just a crack across there. So as you can see here, I'm using the um, pneumatic drill there, a little right angle drill, to drill the first hole on the bottom, and then putting a bolt in there through, and then drill the top hole. Yeah, so that window thing, um, I talked to Mark about it, and um, you know we don't really know exactly what caused that when that window was bonded in it just basically slid into place so I, I don't understand why um, it could be put under pressure right now because there's actually more curvature in the front section than there is in the back section indicating that there's some kind of pressure being put on that window um, that's different from the front of it to the back of it and potentially my little adventure a while ago might have put stress on it but I absolutely 100% sure that that didn't break or it wasn't broken uh, before I left and uh, it didn't look like you know anybody hit it or anything like that so um, it looks like it's just was under pressure for some reason so um, anyway but you know the windows are going to be along with the doors are going to be designed or redesigned for production so they're just easily replaceable and not bonded in like that so Anyway, that's that little problem again. Like there's always something. So here, are these holes there coming through on the inside of the cabin, and so now what I have to do is I need to um, shore those up with some uh, FR4. And just you know, seeing here, I actually doubled up all those plates when I drilled the hole, so I got the holes nice and perpendicular to the mounting bracket, so they came through straight. Uh, the bolts, the bolts and the holes did. Um, but what I need to do now is because that's just a cord section of keel there 
and if I just bolted that up right now, it would it would crush the core under there. So I need to put some hard points in there. So I got this FR4, and I actually d drilled the middle of that on Brit's lathe there before I left. And uh, so now I just need to cut off pieces there. But before I do that, I need to drill the hole. So those the holes are actually only three sixteenths, um, but the hole saw uses a quarter inch uh, guide bit in there. So I've got to take these holes up to quarter inch. And then once I've, so I'm just using the step drill, and then once I've done that, I can use the hole saw just to cut the carbon fiber there. And then ultimately take out the the guide bit from the uh, hole saw there and uh, just run the hole saw by itself just to cut through the foam because I don't want to enlarge the hole on the other side to quarter inch. I need that to stay at 3 sixteenths. So here you see to stop as soon as I get there. And I've got the drill, the guide drill bit's only barely sticking out of the end of the um, of the hole saw there. So once those are drilled, I can just pop that uh, remaining carbon off of the foam there, and then sort of with it, without the guide bit in the drill there, just basically take the drill and get rid of the foam. See, I've sped this up because otherwise it would be boring for you to watch how long this actually took. Um, and that FR4 is like a super super snug fit in there so that's good it's not going to flop around at all um, in fact it was almost too tight so did the other side as well same thing just drilled the hole out to a quarter inch and then um, did the hole saw on there as well and got that cleaned out I'm not sure yet if I'm going to bond these things into place they're such a snug fit there um, just basically pushing them in is going to be enough they're not going to go anywhere we really had to sort of tap them in with the hammer um, as you'll see here in a little bit I just cleaning the foam out there again and just cleaning it up with the end of the chisel and as you can see this is at five times normal speed so anyway it's interesting to be back at work again after being away for two weeks I didn't really have much of a holiday I didn't see the sun the whole time because of all the smoke and the fires and everything down uh, where my family is there so uh, here I'm measuring the depth of those holes here it's just over half an inch deep there and both of them are pretty much the same so that now I know how long to cut those bits of FR4 and again I measured the ones on the other side they're all pretty much the same because it was half inch core in there so as you can see I just marked up a piece there and I just cut that with the um, with a hacksaw because I don't have a bandsaw right now so I made four of those pieces. This is the two for this side. And as you can see, I've just got them um, hammered in there right now. A super tight fit. I, I might bond them in, we'll see. I don't really need to right away for just, you know, for testing this whole setup. But that should be strong enough, uh, you know, to hold this so it doesn't crush the core when I tighten the bolts up. So this is the backing plate there that I made there a while ago. And I used um, that plate that I had on the keel there, and just cut it shorter and bellow the one edge of it again and then painted them black uh, so that's going to be you know holding that whole bracket in so this should be super strong that's really not going to go anywhere um, and even those holes there in the FR4 is a snug fit for the, the uh, AN3 bolts so that's why I'm you know using the driver there uh, just because the bolts are so snug in there and there's the one on the other side as you can see all put in there and uh, this is how it looks there from the front. So next job is uh, to go and finish off cutting the sleeves and then run the cable and mark it all out and crimp all the ends and tighten it all up. So that'll be the next video. Anyway, that's the update for this week. Sorry, it's a short one, but that's only one day of being back at work. Thanks again for watching and tune in again next week.